Hello and many thanks for joining us on Nationwide on the NTA. I am Ifoma Odinta. Now, towards the attainment of the universal health care coverage in Nigeria, the Presidential Health Reform Committee set up in September 2021 to develop a health sector reform program for Nigeria has presented its report and bills to President Muhammad Buhari. Among the various recommendations is the call for the setting up of a monitoring units in the office of the President for successful implementation of the program. State House correspondent GD Unifade reports. The title of this little book, There Is Always Room, and that is exactly what the, this administration is uh, displaying uh, with Nigerians waking up every morning to new things coming from government for the betterment of the people. At this valedictory meeting of the Federal Executive Council, there was still room for the swanning in of seven federal commissioners of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. Of greater importance is the presentation to President Muhammad Yubari, the final report on proposals for the Health Sector Reform Program. The presentation was by the Presidential Health Reform Committee, headed by Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The committee received memoranda from members of the gen of the public. We also took extensive proposals from committee members and the organizations that they represent, including the National Assembly, state governors, unions in the health sector, and the private sector. This was followed by a retreat to brainstorm on several policy options which arose from the submissions. Some of the recommendations are on health governance and leadership, human resources for health, health financing, and health service delivery structure. It also include health infrastructure and pharmaceutical systems, as well as pandemic preparedness and response. Achieving universal health coverage for Nigerians is really the essence of this report. This is to be realized through the prioritization of government spending on health, and boosting of per capita, per capita health expenditure by scaling up the national health insurance system as the preferred public financing arrangement. This approach is one where the national or state health insurance authorities would benefit from the general budget transfers from the relevant federal or state governments. The report therefore recommends health care guarantees for all Nigerians registered on the National Social Register. The Vice President speaks further on some of the recommendations. The committee is fully aware of the governance and institutional arrangements of a reform program. We have proposed a number of institutional changes, including the establishment of the National Tertiary Health Institutions Commission, whose function will be similar to the National Universities Commission and the National Quality and Healthcare Standards Commission. In view of obvious funding constraints, the committee hesitated to recommend new institutions. However, on the balance, we agreed that for us to make progress with our human capital agenda, these institutions were essential. Other recommendations vary from human resource in health, issues such as brain drain to the expansion of access to primary health care services, medical tourism and mobilization or leveraging private capital for health investments as well as their role in expanding the supply of health workers for Nigeria in the medium and long term. The ground is now prepared and the ball now falls on the doorstep of the incoming administration to achieve a universal health care coverage in Nigeria and now soon this will be time.
will tell. In the State House, Jede Onifade, NT News. And now to inauguration of legacy projects. President Muhammad Buhari has flagged off all prospecting in Wadi B. Well in Jere, local government area of Brno State, with a commitment for greater wealth creation and energy security for the state and country at large. The president also commended the dogged determination towards harnessing the country's hydrocarbon resources through frontier exploration by the NNPC Limited. Lydia Sampson reports. President Mohamed Buhari is emphatic that the likely outcome will create employment and reposition the state towards sustainable growth. The consequential effect of the likely positive outcome of the child basing exploration campaign is an increase in national crude oil and gas reserves and production, enhanced national energy security and greater prosperity for our people. I look forward to a successful drilling campaign in the Chad Basin. For Borno State Governor Professor Umar Ababa Ganazulum, the flag off is a pointer to the resolve to diversify the economy. He committed to providing the needed support and security for the development of the project. <laughs> Provide immediate security in this very important zone. It's about part of the efforts and the transformative actions of Mr. President uh, has put on the table, which is to provide an alternative fuel for our communities and our people. And this is going concurrent to the activities that is going on to produce new oil. Who else can we thank but Mr. President himself, who made it possible with the PIA? Of course, with the PIA, we are exploring new frontiers. And today, Borno State is one of those new frontiers that we are exploring. Keep players and the oil and gas say they are optimistic that prospects in the Chad Basin will bring a vista of hope, convert resources to value, in addition to finding alternative sources of energy for the people. They applauded President Muhammad Buhari for sustaining efforts at mitigating energy poverty and fast-tracking Nigeria's frontier exploration. These, they believe, will enable the nation to grow and harness its hydrocarbons while transiting to clean a field. In Meduguri, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Meanwhile, history is made as the second Niger Bridge is inaugurated. Christened Muhammad Buhari second Niger Bridge, this latest addition to the nation's infrastructural assets will boost economic activities in the southeast and southwest regions of Nigeria. Susan Esu witnessed the epoch events. Work on the second Niger Bridge was initiated by the Presidential Infrastructure and Development Fund to help minimize traffic congestion on the old Niger Bridge, which was constructed in 1965. The old bridge has borne the burden of heavy-duty trucks, fully loaded tankers, human and other vehicular movements. Crossing the bridge is indeed a Herculean task. Most worrisome has been the three to four days spent on the bridge by travelers during festive seasons. The virtual inauguration of the second Niger Bridge by President Muhammad Buhari aside from helping to ease traffic, it will allow for ease of doing business between the southeast and the southwest. For me, everything that needed to be given to us has been given to us by the gift of this bridge by Muhammad Buhari. The Governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Suludo, Governor Hope Uzodima of Imo State, and representative of Delta State's Governor, who are beneficiaries of this laudable project, commend President Buhari for putting to rest the agitation of many years. It's the second Niger Bridge, which has been long in the making, and is certainly now a reality. It is a bridge of choice across the river Niger to bring relief to those crossing from the southeast to southwest. I think today there is nothing else other than to express our profound gratitude for the Asaba. There is no point belaboring the, uh, the importance of this bridge. Uh, people describe it as a game changer. We will go as home and in that spot. That the second Niger bridge is today a reality. It's a team of job. 
The inauguration of this second Niger bridge by President Muhammad Buhari for use by Nigerians is one of his historic achievements in office. This bridge, of course, will help to minimize the perennial traffic gridlock on the first Niger bridge, which was constructed in 1965. From the second Niger bridge, Susan Esu, NTA News. And in the aftermath of the inauguration of the second Niger bridge by President Muhammad Buhari, Austin Edemodu gives an insight on the history of the project. The second Niger bridge is now the messiah of the century. It took over 1,468 employed workers on site and other 8,000 elsewhere, 8.7 million man hours and the sum of 338 billion naira to execute these iconic national assets. From 1959, when the second Niger bridge was first proposed, the project had suffered several setbacks, not until 2008 when preliminary work was initiated. It was inherited by the present administration, which intensified work on the project in 2018 and delivered under the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. True to its determination to accomplish the project before the end of this administration, the second Niger Bridge was open to local traffic on December 15, 2022. Today, this 1.6 kilometer bridge and other ancillary infrastructure, including 10.3 kilometer highway Obusi interchange, is a shared testimony of President Muhammad Buhari and Nigerians, who are the major beneficiaries of this iconic project. We do not act on infrastructure by accident. It has been a deliberate choice for our government as a tool to fight poverty, to create economic growth and employment, and to open the path of prosperity for our people. No doubt, the second Niger Bridge has not only cemented the geopolitical integration of the country, it has further opened a new vista of socio-economic opportunities and growth to the country at large. In Abuja, I'm Austin Edemodo, NTU News. And still on infrastructural projects, President Mohamed Buhari says the construction of the new Ecom Bridge is to cater for heavy-duty vehicles along the project corridor, as well as enable the Calabar Seaport, Airport and Free Trade Zone fully functional and accessible to traffic from the strategic northeast and north-central parts of the country. Correspondent Achibong Basi reports that President Mohamed Buhari performed the inauguration. The construction of the new Ecom Bridge is a story of President Mohamed Buhari meeting the people of Cross River State and Nigerians who are the major beneficiaries of the new bridge at the point of their needs as this will reduce travel time. The Ecom Bridge is meant to boost trade in and around the Calabar Port and Free Zone and facilitate transport connectivity from the south south through the north central to the northeast, this is a bridge across the river itself. Expressing appreciation to the federal government for the completion of the new Ecom Bridge, Governor Ben Ayade, represented by the Commissioner of Works, appealed to the federal government to consider other federal routes in the state for reconstruction. Yes, there are 13 federal Tong uh, A roads in our state. We have you have intervened in nine. We want to ask like Oliver Twist. Please remember the Calabar Oban Ekang Road Section 2. That is a federal road. Please remember the Ikom Obudu, Obudu Ranch project. That is a federal road. But when this administration came in, you know, some other sources of funding by way of uh, uh, special initiatives, you know, were brought on board. One of them is uh, Soko. We have many others, uh, NMPC. Uh, NSIA and the rest of it. We in Cross River State remain very grateful to the president of this country for keeping to his promise in ensuring the completion and commissioning of this all important bridge. Stakeholders believe that the new Econ Bridge will improve patronage at the Calabar port and also boost economic activities within the state and Cameroon, a border country in Calabar.
Achibombasi, NTN News. Now, building legacy projects for economic growth of the country remain topmost on the list of the Buhari administration. One of these projects is the completed local Oweto Bridge, inaugurated by President Muhammadu Buhari to open a new window for economic prosperity. Aliu Tijani reports. Local Oweto Bridge, a promise made, promise fulfilled, and there is excitement amongst the people of the community along the corridor. Today is a day of happiness. Today is a day of joy to the entire people of local community and vis-a-vis -vis the people across the River Benue. A 2.5 kilometer dual carriage bridge with more than 70 kilometers road constructed linking Nasra and Benue state. Its construction has cut travel distance for commuters traveling from north to eastern part of the country with prospect for economic activities along the corridor. President Muhammadu Buhari, who inaugurates the project visually, says his administration has done well in closing the gap of infrastructural deficit in the country. These are truly bridges of connectivity, interaction, and integration across major rivers of commerce and the opportunity such as the river and Niger Benway and the Cross River. For the people of Nasra and Benue states, the landmark project demonstrates the commitment of the federal government to link every part of the country. The people of Loko, as well as Oweto in Nasarawa and Benue states, as well as all the southeastern part of the country, are celebrating a dream come true of this bridge. We believe it will strengthen the relationship between Nasarawa and Benue. And it will enhance the economic development of Nasarawa and Benue. Also inaugurated is a power project in Loko to provide quality and affordable electricity to the community. Aliu Tijani, NTA News. Over 200 kilometers section of the Nigeria Zaria Kano Highway have been completed and officially inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari virtually. Muhammad Umar Adjigi reports that this is one of the legacy projects of President Buhari. The Zaria Kano Dual Carriage Highway has now received the required attention years after its deteriorated condition of multiple potholes. Smooth rides, reduction of travel time, more tons of commercial vehicles, meaning more money in their pockets, and timely delivery of perishable goods, just to mention a few pros arising from the reconstruction of this highway. Among those to witness the presidential inauguration of the project is the governor of Kano State and the minister of state works and housing. I just want to appeal to the road users to use it responsibly. Because that's the, it's one thing delivering the, the asset, it's another thing, you know, using the asset well. The uh, President has given us a parting gift by completing this uh, road. With the President sealing all the formalities at the Council Chamber, a replica unveiling on his behalf was performed. Thank you. While we are continuous on the 165 kilometers, stretch of Abuja to Kaduna, the completed section is proof of our investment choices. The Abuja Kano Road, the Second Niger Bridge, and the Lagos Ibadan Expressway were all funded partly from our dividend income and from investment in the NLNG repatriated funds from overseas. Motorists flying the road commended the federal government for the construction of this highway that has reduced the rate of accidents in Kaduna. I am Muhammad Murajingi, NTN News. And more on projects inauguration. It was a dream come true for the Nigeria Customs Service as President Muhammad Buhari inaugurates the services headquarters in Abuja. State House correspondent Jidi Unifade reports. Thank you very much.
Located in Aibrao Maitama area of Abuja, the foundation of the 12-story building was laid by the Olusha Gobasanjo administration. But the construction work on it has been slow, leading to the cost leaping from 2.8 billion naira back in 2005 to 19.6 billion naira at completion in 2023. Under your guidance, we have witnessed remarkable milestones that have revolutionized our operations and brought us closer to our goal of becoming a world-class customs administration. We are particularly grateful for Your Excellency's recent signing of the Customs Bill into law, bringing an end to the old law which has been in force for the last 63 years. The Controller General of the Nigeria Customs Service commends the President for the transformation which has taken place within the customs with its support, such as the modernization of its service operations as well as the improvement of workers' welfare. President Muhammad Ubuari deliberately keeps aside his prepared speech, says his choice of headship of the Ministry of Finance and the Nigerian Customs Service was deliberate. Deliberately close the borders because knowing Nigerians, they order rice and give some Nigerian address and then they bring the rice here. And with our land and our potentialities, God, we thank God, Nigeria is favored. We have people, we have land, we have weather. How many nations are so lucky as Nigeria in the world? Very few nations are as lucky as we are. We thank God for that. So closing that border, 1,600 kilometers more than that, from Lake Chad to Benin, and Nigeria insists that they have to impress their neighbors and other people that they eat foreign rice. I said, no rice. You either you eat what you grow, you grow what you eat, or you die. <laughs> I, I, I think uh, I, I tried to make my point. And later, Nigeria appreciated it because it provides more jobs. People go back to the land. We have the land, and we produce what we eat. Let uh, whoever bring, uh, grow excess rice eat his own rice or sell it somewhere else, but not to Nigeria. The president says it is important for the country to have a good relationship with neighboring countries. In Abuja, Jude Onifade, Ante News. It was uh, a joyous moment for especially the federal civil servants in Zamfara State as a long awaited federal secretariat complex, Guso was inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari. A cross-session of the public servants and other stakeholders who spoke with NTA News shortly after the event described the project as one of the major footprints of the Buhari administration in the States. Jamilu Ibrahim has the details. Staff of the federal establishments in Zamfara State have over the years been looking forward to seeing the completion of the federal secretariat complex which was awarded about 12 years ago. The completion and inauguration of the project by President Muhammadu Buhari is hence one of their joyous moments. We hereby commission this federal secretariat for the use of the federal civil service in Zamfara State. The civil servants are scattered over by the state and the federal civil servants. But now with this secretary, they are all going to be under the same uh, umbrella. It will enhance the uh, service delivery and it will ease uh, their way of uh, doing their work. A cross section of the workers who spoke with NTA News appreciated President Muhammad Buhari for making the project a reality, expressing confidence that it will go a long way in improving their productivity. As many at times I have been approached with the heads complaining that some of them their rent has expired and some are being intimidated. The Secretariat has a total number of 498 offices which are to be shared among federal government ministries, agencies and parastatals, most of which have been operating in rented apartments since the creation of Zamfara State in 1996. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Meanwhile, in line with the developmental agenda of the federal government, President Muhammad Buhari has inaugurated the Federal Secretariat Complex in Yenegua. 
The Secretariat is expected to house federal agencies and parastatals in Bielsa State. Doris Akumonye reports. The project, located at the Oxbow Lake axis of the state capital, will address the accommodation needs of federal workers in the state. Inaugurating the project, President Muhammad Buhari said in eight years, he has doubled Nigeria's infrastructure, which is a symbol of a renewed Nigeria. The president disclosed that the country's GDP under his watch has risen from 20 to 40 percent, despite the pandemic and challenges. The president dedicated the complex in honor of the former president of Nigeria, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan. I'm delighted that even the twilight of our tenure, we still render developmental services as we hand over three bridges, bridge projects, three federal secretariat projects, and one road project. These are only symbols of our efforts and commitment to upgrade, renew, and expand Nigeria's talk of infrastructure. Earlier, Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, commended the president for the three new federal secretaries in the country. The minister said the drive shows commitment to end poverty and usher in prosperity to the people. This is the story of how the Muhammad Buhari policies meet the people at their point of need, even if many of those people will never meet Muhammad Buhari in person. Prosperity is already being delivered by these projects. Some stakeholders expressed joy for the completion of the project. We're very happy that the project is finally completed. This, no doubt, will encourage productivity. The is sitting on a, a pad foundation as designed by the project consultants. I'm very happy, I'm very excited. This magnificent edifice here will not just solve accommodation problem. It also contains an exhibition hall, banking hall, post office, reception, conference hall, committee room, and a total of 300 parking space. In Yenagoa, Doris Akomonye, NTA News. Lagos Network Center is our first stop on Nationwide today with Hingino as our guide. Hello, Hingino. Chief Magistrate Adeola Olatumbosun of Yaba Magistrate Court has dismissed an application by the Nigeria Police Force seeking to arraign Afrobeat singer Sheon Kuti for an alleged assault on a police officer. Joel Bupola reports that the case has been adjourned till the 3rd of July while awaiting legal advice from the Office of the Directorate of Public Prosecutions on the matter. The appearance of Sheo in court on Wednesday followed his release on bail on Tuesday after days in police custody at the State Criminal Investigation Department, Panty, for allegedly assaulting a police officer. Attempts by the police counsel, Cyril Ejiofor, to get the leave of the court to arraign the defendant was resisted by his counsel, Femi Falano S.A.N., who urged the court to dismiss the application, maintaining that such actions of the police amount to a contempt of court. The court in an earlier ruling had ordered the police to duplicate the case file and forward it to the office of the DPP at the Lagos State Ministry of Justice for an advice on whether to prosecute the case or not. The court also ruled that the police cannot play the dual role of investigator and prosecutor. In a ruling, Magistrate Adiola Latubos said she would stand by her previous order to await the DPP's advice. She adjourned the case till July 3, 2023. In Lagos, Joel Mukwola. NC News. Now to the aviation sector. The quest to establish an aviation hub around Lagos Airport is gradually becoming a reality with the expansion of existing terminals to create seamless passengers experience. The latest is the expansion of the General Aviation Terminal at the Murtala Mohamed Airport in Lagos, which the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, described as a child of necessity due to the growing number of passengers. Michael Olale reports. When it comes to domestic flight operations, the General Aviation Terminal at the Lagos Airport is a vital transit and destination point for air travel. But the increase in the volume of passengers is changing the seamless and friendly experience once synonymous with these environments. In response to this development, which is taking a toll on existing facilities, 
The federal government has created expansion, with these being the latest. The aviation minister said the facility, which contains protocol lounge, airline office spaces, with the complement of conveniences, will enhance safety, security, and comfort of passengers. In this terminal, which will increase from 256 passenger capacity to 1,054, which is significant. So that's about four times the capacity we increase on this terminal. And I, you agree with me, this is a terminal needing, needing at the time to be expanded. We are leaving aviation better than we met it. We have doubled the number of airlines, doubled the number of airports, quadrupled the number of passengers. A projected increase in air cargo imports and exports offers huge prospects for Nigeria to gain from. This potential are in focus as the minister also inspected work on the newly constructed cargo terminal at the Lagos airports. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. Remember that you can still follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other, social, uh, other verified social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Nationwide will continue with Ifoma in Abuja after this break. You're welcome back. The Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria has reiterated commitments to address challenges confronting the Nigerian aviation industry to meet global best practices. Managing Director Kabir Yusuf Mohammed made the promise at a function in Abuja. Ali Tukur reports. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, various sectors of the economy were impacted negatively and the Nigerian aviation industry was not spared. All these challenges now aside, it's a down in the industry. New thinking and new approach from a new man to reposition the airport authority. Everything you've seen at the airport that is making our airports uh, passenger friendly is what we'll continue to consolidate on. With the efforts of the present administration in terms of improving security, safety and infrastructure, Kabir Yusuf Mohammed is optimistic that the aviation industry is now on the path to sustainable development. Ali Utuku, NTN. And federal civil servants in Anambra states are in jubilant mood, describing the newly inaugurated federal secretariat as a cutting-edge complex that will make the workforce in the states more productive. Ngozi Okekaru, who sampled opinion of some workers on the development, says the workers praised President Muhammad Buhari for giving them a worthy parting gift. We shall say this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The contract for the project located at Executive Business District Layout Orca in Orca South Local Government Area was awarded on 9th. December 2011 and was completed and taken over by the Ministry of Works and Housing on 14th July 2022. We already told them about maintenance culture. Part of it is that everybody will have a maintenance unit by which you can be able to adjust certain things in-house. The two secretariats, the state secretariats and the federals are co-located. So, you know, they are very close to each other. So ministries can interface with their sister, their federal counterparts here very easily. The Secretariat has 498 office space, exhibition hall, reception, conference hall, banking hall, well layout parking spaces, lift facilities, plus more for the comfort of the users who are advised to make judicious use of the facilities and live up to the expectations in the discharge of their duties. We enhance development because I know Definitely, we're going to have all tribes working in the Secretariat. In Oka, Chinyere Fesi Okoye, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has written to Senate seeking approval for the reimbursement of 16.7 billion naira to Bono State for federal government's road projects carried out by the state. The executive communication highlights that the request is sequel to the approval by the Federal Executive Council on the 3rd of May 2023. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunkwo reports. First plenary of the week, 
21 days to the end of this assembly, there are still some pending issues that need consideration, and the Senate is not relenting. The day's business commenced with President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, reading executive communication from President Muhammad Buhari, seeking approval to reform Borno State for road projects it executed. was based on an appeal by the state and my directive to the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing to ensure that sufficient funds are provided for the completion of Dambua Chibok Road based on the current course of completion of the project. The Honorable Minister of Works and Housing would provide any additional information that may be required by National Assembly for the consideration of this request. Senate continued with the consideration of executive request. It confirmed the nomination of Funke Opeke for appointment as member of the Inversal Service Provision Board. Abike Debiri Arewa as chairman and chief executive officer of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission for a second term. It also confirmed three nominees for appointment as members of the governing board of the Niger Data Development Commission. Bernard Okumaba, Patrick Asioweren, and Kirian Uchebu. Senate passed the Parliamentary Welfare Program Bill and the Nigerian College of Taxation and Fiscal Studies Establishment Bill. Funding system for the welfare and well-being of the former members of the National Assembly. Senate condemned attacks on communities in Mangu local government area of Plateau State and called on security agencies to provide protection for people of the area as moved by Senator Nora Dadut. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and FEMA to provide immediate relief to the IDP camps. And of course, there should be an improvement in the security immediately uh, to make sure that there is no uh, infiltration by those people or their agents. The bill seeking to prohibit secret recruitment in the Federal Civil Service passed first reading from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. In the meantime, the House of Representatives wants the federal government, through the Transmission Company of Nigeria, to find ways of settling lingering issues which led to disconnection of electricity distribution companies from the national grid. House members note that the disconnection, which is related to payments default on the parts of discourse to the TCN, is affecting electricity supply in the country. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. The issue was raised as a matter of urgent national importance by Uime Idem, stating that majority of the discos have not complied fully with the operational codes and guidelines. Virtually all the distribution companies of Nigeria are defaulting in one area or the other to the detriment of the consumers, ranging from non-compliance to the market rules with respect to payments of the outstanding invoices. Meanwhile, the House has adopted the report of the Conference Committee on the Electric Power Bill, which seeks to strengthen federal government's power sector reform efforts. Provide for comprehensive legal and a future framework for the power sector in Nigeria in the areas of electricity generation, transmission system operation, distribution supply, trading, enforcement of consumer rights, and obligations. The motion from Sada Soli requesting the absorption of students evacuated from Sudan into Nigerian universities was adopted. Consider the quota system imposed on certain courses such as law and medicine to waive them for the students concerned in order to enable them to continue with their programs pending the resolution uh, of the Sudan crisis. The House will forward to Mr. President for assent the Constitution Alteration Bill No. 46 on membership of National Security Council having met requirements. Membership of the National Security Council to include presiding officers of the National Assembly and 58 independent candidacy uh, 2023. Other features as plenary include the second reading of bill to establish Nigeria Security Academy in Bichi, Kano State, sponsored by Sani Bala, and built in Act Code of Conduct Bureau and Tribunal. The report from House Committee on AIDS, Loans and Debt Management on refunds to Borno and Plata states for projects executed was approved from the National Six, Assembly. Lami seven, Ali, NTN News. Eight. And that's the much we can take on nationwide today as we join our Port Harcourt um, Centre for a live telecast. Thanks for watching.